Pastor Mari S. Nichols the first. Now we're getting ready to go into the fourth chapter of Malachi. This is a long series because in order for you to understand the truth, to get the truth, to get founded in the truth, it took a long time for them to hustle you. Okay, it takes a while to straighten this all out because we have been misled, misdirected for so many years. It's been passed on generation to generation, but the truth is what will set you free. And that's what this is all about. It's a truth seeking, a truth mission. Hallelujah, of God, from God. Will a man rob God's children? Now, God was speaking to the priest in Malachi. He was check, chastising them. He was checking them hard because they had did some things. They, they were just manipulating the same game as today. But see, the Lord said he changes not. So he's the same God. You rob the people of the money through the tithes and offerings. Then you have a pastor's anniversary and you want them to give money for that too? You didn't already rob them. <laughs> Taking rent money, bill money. You can say, oh, well, don't do it. You know they're going to give because you already got them programmed like that. I've heard ministers say they got their congregation trained when to give and what to give. I've heard so much behind the scenes because, see, I've been behind the scenes. I didn't just wake up to this. I've been seeing this all the time. But I had to wait on God for the right time, in the right place, in the right avenue to bring this out. I'm going to have to write a book about this. The fourth chapter. The first verse, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wing and shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant which I commanded unto you in, in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, we are in the beginning of sorrows. If you read Matthew 24, we're in the beginning of sorrows. You all better start making some smart investments because see, if you partake of an evil thing, then you count it as a partake. If you see one drinking the Kool-Aid and fall out, don't you stand in line and wait on the Kool-Aid too. Come on now. Use some, some common sense. He said, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. You know what he's talking about? And the proud, yea, and all that, all that do wickedly. He ain't just talking about the heathens. That goes for you children of God too. If you're doing wicked, wickedly and that day cometh upon you and you have not repented and turned from your wicked ways, I'm sorry, you're going to burn right along with them according to this word of God. Okay? No unclean thing will get in. You've got to strive for perfection. Look, the family down the street is hungry. You're taking your money to the church, and I'm telling you where I've been. And you bring the family down there, and the church tell you where they're not a member. I've had a church tell me, well, you haven't been a member for two months. I, I told them my lecture was getting ready to get cut off. They said, well, you haven't been a member for two months. Well, they're getting ready to cut off in two days. Well, we don't know what to tell you. This is a big problem in the church. Okay, God has sent me through various churches with various scenarios, and it wasn't lies, I was in situations, but he always told me what he didn't want. 
when he raised me up. And see, I, I see so much corruption that people are losing respect because the preachers don't respect the church either. They're profaning the holiness of the church. In essence, they're disrespecting it because no altar calls. Okay, uh, 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 testimony service gone. It's all about him and the money. They even cutting back on the choir participation. In, in essence, but then they want you there. Let the people start boycotting them, tie that offering plate and see what happens. Now, Jesus said about giving. I don't know if you all, y'all, maybe y'all still like being under that law. I don't know. I'm not under law. I'm free. And freely I receive, freely I give. But I give where God said give. But will a man rob God's children? How long will you keep robbing the children? And children, how long will you keep letting the man rob you? Will you keep letting them stiff you? Now, I'm talking to the ones that know, you know what I'm talking about. You're doing it faithfully, but you're still struggling. Now, you may not tell nobody else. You may keep this to yourself, and I understand that. But I've been there before. I told you, I've been to, to the church on Sunday and at the pawn shop on Monday, trying to make it to payday on Friday, and then turn around at the church giving again. And then turn around and can't give it. You ask for $10 from the church, they look at you like you didn't ask for $10 million. They're going to take you through everything to try to discourage you from asking. Are they going to make you feel like you shouldn't be asking? Or anything to turn you away. But now if you put money in the bank, they can't look at you crazy when you go there to get it. <laughs> this is worse than the worldly system because in the worldly system you kind of expect things. But the worldly system goes by law, goes by rules, goes by strength, and they stick to the rules. Regardless, it's not a personal thing. But for some reason, over in the church world, it's all personal, and yet the money is personal. You can't even reach your preacher. When you're sick, you can't even reach your pastor just to talk, but yet he wants to reach out to you to get that money every Sunday. And, oh, all you got to do is misgiving. He'll call you. Okay? He'll look for you. He'll send somebody after you because that, that's too much. And don't let you be a big, big tither. Oh, and don't let your son play football. Don't, don't let him have a promising NFL career or NBA career. Oh, my God, they're going to cater to you. They're going to they treat you like the president. <laughs> That's another story. But anyway, will a man rob God's children? Yes, through tithes and offering. Now, this is just the beginning. We, we've just dealt with nine, nine parts so far, but we've got a lot to go. And we're going to deal with the first tither. Coming up in the next part, we're going to deal with the first tithe. The word this tithe is beginning. What was the purpose in the intent? See, everything with God, everything has a time and a person, a purpose and a season. So what was the time, purpose, and the season for tithe? There was a time of tithing. But God said that he no longer accepted your offerings anymore. Then we're going to get into a scripture where he said, I don't want your Sabbaths. I don't want your new moon. I don't want your incense. I don't want anything. Why? Because they were giving it and still doing what they're doing. Some people today think they pay their tithes. They can smoke their dough, pay their tithes, and they're all right. They can pay their tithes and go fornicate. They're all right. They can pay their tithes and be a lesbian. They're all right. They can pay their tithes and be a homosexual. They're all right. They can pay their tithes and cuss their mom out and be all right. They can pay their tithes and cuss their daddy out and be all right. Boy, you've been lied to. You've been duped. You ain't been doing them but getting ripped off. Your tithes does not save your soul. Your tithes will not deliver and set you free from crack cocaine. Your tithes, come on now, hallelujah, is not your salvation. Okay? Your tithes is not your Jesus. Your tithes didn't go to the cross. <laughs> huh? Come on now. But now what you do from your heart, since you are the church and you are the temple, then where is the storehouse? The storehouse has got to be in your heart. So what are you doing for God? Not you can't, you can't on the last day say, well, God, that minister was supposed to be doing. No, God wants to know what are you doing. He's blessed you with finances. He's blessed you with this. You see things that people don't see. You see hungry people. You see homeless people that everybody don't see. Now, don't you rob God's children. Some of these people you despise are children of God. Some of these people you don't want to be bothered with are children of God. You should seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all these things will be added to you. What will be added to you? He'll add to you what to do, where to go, who to talk to. My God, if we obey God, we probably wouldn't be in some of these churches we're in now. We're in there because Grandma went there. We're in there because we bound up. When do you graduate? When do you go? You, in, in public school, you go from elementary, middle school to high school, and you can go to college. 
Okay, some of y'all still have not graduated from elementary. They got you in special ed. That's why they're taking your money. Because you're not studying to show yourself approved. They got you on the little yellow bus. You don't even know it. You got a special ed teacher up there as a, as a, as a, a minister that's taking your money, that's keeping you limited education like they did the slaves. Because once you come into the knowledge that you are the church, when you come into the knowledge that these tithes and offering was for a certain time, but now there's a different dispensation of the word, then you come into an understanding, your eyes are open, you're enlightened, then you will be abundantly blessed. We're all supposed to have. It ain't just one or two supposed to have. We're all supposed to have. Even the handmaidens had. Even the servants had. Come on now. They had all the cattle, the gold, the silver. The they had everything. That's the God we serve. If we're saying as it is in heaven, and shall it be on earth, then why are we lacking? Why are we struggling? He, God even called some of the enemies to give unto his children. We testify about a new car that we got to take five years to pay off. We testify about a house that's going to take us 30 years to pay off. Now, we serve a God that can do it right then and there. But for some reason, we mess it up somewhere. You need to individually check yourself because you're wrecking yourself. You need to open your eyes and recognize what the Word of God says pertaining to you. Will a man rob God's children? Don't allow yourself to get robbed any further. We still got long ways to go on this. But will a man rob God's children? I say yes through tithes and offerings. That's the first thing he's robbing you through. Okay, the money. Satan knows if you get the money. I'm talking about those that got a heart for God. He knows what you're going to do. But because you're caught up in this worldly church system where the Pharisees are running and enhancing it, now it's just it's, it's out of control. And you sit up here praising people that are doing the work of Satan up there in the pulpit. That is one of the reasons. You got to come clean. You know the tree by the fruit that it bears. If it's not bearing fruit, I mean, how can you not feed the homeless? Thank you for tuning in. Either you are free, or you know it's the end. You show me.